welcome to the first public meeting of the watershed. I'm Judy Arnold, the county supervisor from Novato, and I'm happy to be working on this. Um, the, the goal of the Novato Watershed Program is to provide a framework to integrate flood protection and environmental restoration that will protect and enhance Novato's watershed. And if you remember, Ross Valley has the worst flooding in Marin County. But did you know that Novato has the second worst flooding? After the last big storms in Marin, when downtown San Anselmo was flooded and many businesses were lost, the county decided that they had to deal with this problem. The Army Corps of Engineers had always offered widening the concrete culverts along the creek that was flooded and every time the community refused to accept that. So the county came up with a watershed program for the Ross Valley where culverts were converted back to creeks, concrete was converted back to soils, clinging plants and trees, and the stream pathways were winding to slow down the water and in extreme cases, basins were planned. The Ross Valley community was all part of the planning. And in the end, they voted for a parcel tax based on the proximity to flooding to begin after many, many years to really address the flooding with a watershed. Novato is now second in line for this program. And tonight is the beginning, which is why we are here, to introduce you to the planning that's been going on. It is noteworthy to mention that in Novato, we have an impressive partnership of agencies, much more so than in the Ross Valley. And we're all working together to achieve these goals. And these agencies include the County of Marin, the City of Novato, North Marin Water District, Novato Sanitary District, and the Flood Control Zone 1 Advisory Board. I want to acknowledge their work here and their, the members that are in attendance. And if you're here, just raise your hand. Jack Baker, Rick Freitas, Ernie Ganas, Eric Lucan, Deet Stroh, and Bill Long. Thank you also to the Humane Society for hosting us tonight. And finally, a big thank you to the Department of Public Works staff who have been instrumental in launching the watershed program. We give Public Works a hand. <laughs> that ought to make you feel better about getting up. <laughs> okay. And you've gotten us to where we are tonight. So now I want to introduce and hand it over to Liz Lewis, who really has been the, the main person working behind this with all the other staff, and she's going to get us going on the agenda. Thanks, Liz. Thank you, Judy, for that background. Um, I'm Liz Lewis, Principal Planner with the Marin County Watershed Program, Public Works. Um, somehow we managed to squeeze this meeting in tonight between the Warriors uh, Game 5 and Game 6, so uh, hopefully there'll be a few more folks coming in. Um, we have two presentations on tap for you tonight. Um, the first presentation will start out by reviewing why our flood management considers the flow of water across all the lands that drain to Novato Creek. In essence, the watershed approach. Then we'll be transported uh, via time machine to Lower Novato Creek circa 1870. What did Novato Creek look like 150 years ago? And how can that knowledge inform future flood management actions? and help us adapt to rising tides. Uh, but before we do that, I have one comment on feedback. We do want to hear from you tonight. We have uh, four ways to provide feedback. You can provide feedback to Lori Williams, who's the project planner for the Novato Watershed. Her email and cards are outside. We developed this uh, comment card, so we'd like to hear from you tonight, especially on your preference for meetings, whether you prefer evenings or uh, Saturday mornings. And then finally, we have a website marinwatersheds.org, and you'll see that up here on the screen um, a lot tonight. 
And um, then finally, if you signed up, that's another way uh, to provide feedback, so you can provide it directly to us via the website as well. So with that, welcome. Thank you for coming tonight, and I'll turn it over to Lori Williams. All right, thank you all for coming tonight. Um, I'm going to do an introduction to Nevada Watershed Program, and um, I want to introduce myself also as a resident of the watershed. Um, I live in Nevada Watershed, um, and working on this program, I've learned a lot about the watershed and some of the issues we face. Um, so, as already mentioned, the, water, the Nevada Watershed Program is one of several um, being run by Marin County um, and, um, and our partners. So, um, tonight I'm going to talk about why we have the Nevada Watershed Program, how we are implementing this watershed approach, what the program products are and the timeline, um, what are some of the potential solutions that we're looking at, and what are the opportunities for com community input? Um, the community is obviously one of our most important stakeholders in this program, and the program goes nowhere without you. Um, and then lastly, we'll follow up with um, how you can get more information if you want to follow up. So Novato, why a Novato watershed program? Um, Novato obviously has a legacy of flooding, as you can see from these historical photos. Um, in a, the past 85 years, Novato has experienced about 12 major storm events. You can do the math, that's over one per decade. And that obviously has implications for um, individual and community well-being. Um, after the 1982 uh, floods, um, Novato came together and passed a fee measure and implemented some projects in the watershed to reduce flooding. So in, a, in addition to the legacy of flooding, we have a legacy of community participation in finding solutions. Um, but we still have work to do. Um, the, the flood control district in 2005 and 2014 breached levees in the lower watershed to take pressure off of Novato Creek and to save downtown from flooding. So those are post um, the 1984 projects. And we're looking ahead to keeping the community um, uh, safe from sea level rise. So reducing um, operations and maintenance costs, looking at sea level rise, and um, continuing to fix our flooding issues is what this program is all about. Um, and you might say, uh, but there's a drought on, why are we considering flooding right now? And this graphic shows um, a chart down at the bottom that shows 2014 was the third driest year on record since 1900. And yet in December, Highway 37 was closed due to high waters. So flooding can happen in a drought, and it can happen in a non-drought, and it's an issue for our watershed, and we need to take that into consideration. So to step back a little bit, I want to talk a little bit about what a watershed is. Um, the simple definition is an area of land that drains to a single point, and um, you can kind of think of it as a bowl that's tipped a little bit, and anything in that bowl kind of rushes down and out one little place. Um, this graphic was produced by University of Michigan, but I think it does a, an inter interesting job of kind of mimicking our watershed um, with the steep upper slopes, generally open uh, recreational or ag pasture lands, um, there's reservoirs up there in the headwaters. The creek flows down into the valley floor, which is where our, our residential and commercial development tends to be, and then flows out to the baylands and then to San Pablo Bay. And the watershed um, produces what we call ecosystem services in the form of water supply and storage, uh, fish and wildlife habitat, human habitat, um, flood control benefits. So all these things are going on in this watershed, in any watershed. And then the watershed approach takes that into consideration because flooding doesn't know jurisdictional boundaries. And so it encourages um, a more holistic thought process for taking care of some of the issues that we have. It encourages collabor collaboration across jurisdictions, which we're seeing with our partners. Um, it combines multi-benefit um, elements such as flood protection and habitat restoration. It supports cost-effective solutions, so we're not all um, reinventing the wheel. And it's very attractive to state and federal regulatory and funding agencies when they see that we have um, a thoughtful process and a plan and community support, um, that just makes it really attractive. 
And last but certainly not least is the stakeholder driven and community based. This is what it's all about. Um, the watershed is the, the community. So um, Supervisor Arnold has already discussed our, our partners. These are very important to us. They've um, joined us in funding this initial um, set of studies and they certainly put a lot of leadership and staff time into um, working with us. So what is the process and what is the product? What is this watershed program doing? Um, I hope you can all see this graphic. The middle line is essentially a timeline from two, 2014 to the middle of so spring of 2016. Down at the bottom is the community meetings. We have three of those planned. We're having the first one right now. And along the top are the products um, that we are doing in this process. So 2012 to 2014, we were really focused on uh, what we call the hydrology and hydraulic studies, the H&H. &H. And that essentially was telling us um, how much water is this watershed producing, what is the shape and size of the channels, and when you have the size and shape of the channels and you add that amount of water into there, if there's an excess, that's water coming out of the creek and that's flooding. So where does that happen and under what conditions? And it turns out that Nevada Watershed Program is really quite complex. We have the upper watershed creek flowing out, and then we have the tidal influence um, in the lower watershed, and where those hit and when they hit in, in storm offense is, is important. So it took a long time to, to work that out. But um, our existing conditions model was done last year. That's posted on our website. And now we're moving in to the alternatives um, scenario selection, and that's kind of the what if scenario. So, what if we raise Stafford Dam? What does that do to flooding downstream? Does it stop it? Is that enough? Is it not enough? What else can we do? And that's where we are right now. So, last week we posted to our website our draft alternatives technical memo, which goes through um, the process that we went through to select um, alternatives. And proposed a set of alternatives to go forward with modeling. And that's one of the things that we would like community feedback on. Are we missing anything? Does it sound right? Um, and, and that nature. So that is on our website. That's where we are now. We're going to talk a little bit about that um, in some upcoming slides. Um, and then this summer and fall, we'll be modeling those alternatives for, uh, in order to assess um, how well they do in reducing flood risk. And then that process will wrap up in the fall with a draft assessment um, report, which will um, lay out how well these things are doing. Once again, that will go to the public for review, um, and we'll have our second community meeting to present those results. And then, um, once again, based on um, incorporating public comment and feedback, we will produce a final report. Uh, we'll have another community meeting to um, present the final report and to discuss next steps. And then out here on the very end, I have this elections with a question mark. And that gets to, um, if we have the community support and we have a program laid out um, that makes sense, we may try to go to a fee election to support these projects. The watershed program right now with its partners is funding these initial studies, but there isn't money for construction of projects. So in order to um, implement any, any of the product, projects, um, we need a revenue source. The funding strategy would, would help us determine how much grant money we could get, um, and that would depend on the products that go into that. So to get a little bit, um, because right now our process is focused on these alternatives and potential flood protection solutions, I just wanted to go into a few of these. Um, in general, they can be thought of in four general categories. Increasing storage, um, such as uh, raising Stafford Dam. Increasing flow conveyance, which usually means widening and or deepening um, creek channels. <coughs> bypassing high flows um, to take pressure off of, say, downtown Novato Creek. Um, and realigning the levee system. We have a lot of levees in the lower watershed, and realigning those could do different things depending on how it was done. It could increase storage, it could increase flow conveyance, it could do many of these different things. So next I'm gonna talk about um, some particular things that we're talking about. I have two slides here, one for the upper watershed and one for the lower watershed. So potential alternatives, what if scenarios that we're thinking about 
in the upper watershed include raising Stafford Dam. Um, it's been raised before. There's a possibility of raising it again that has some implications for Stafford Lake Park. Um, there's floodplain restoration downstream of the dam that could not only um, increase habitat for steelhead, but could, could settle out sediments to keep those from going further downstream and could also calm water uh, as it goes downstream. Um, right around uh, Pico Vista, the creek is very narrow. It's bedrock, so it can't get deeper and it can't get wider on its own. It's a place where water has come out of the creek and runs down Pico Vista, so we're looking at um, some stir surface street and storm drain improvements in that area to take care of floodwaters. And then Nave Gardens is a low area. So we're gonna look at um, installing pump stations and tide gates and see what that could do for that area. Um, every four years, the flood control district dredges Novato Creek approximately from behind Novato Fair Safeway to the Roland Movie Theater. It's a long dredge, it's expensive, it's resource impactful. Um, we would like to redesign that to be less expensive, perhaps um, a less frequent interval to do it. Um, and a smaller dredge footprint. And then down in the bottom I have um, bypass high flows. We have a, um, a high flow, flow bypass near the Peeney Hardware Store. And there's a possibility of um, decreasing the bypass so more storm waters could go there, um, which would take water, instead of feeding it into Novato Creek at the confluence in the low part, would feed its um, on basically through Scottsdale Marsh and Scottsdale Pond instead. So those are some of the options we're looking at. The, um, the technical memo that's on our website goes into this in much more detail. If you're interested, I would refer you to that. Oops. And then in the Baylands, um, some of the same ones are on here just because of geography, the re redesign of the dredge reach and the bypassing high flows. But we do have a lot of levees um, in the lower baylands, and a lot of opportunities for moving those, moving, removing, um, setting back, um, um, widening the creek channel for more conveyance, um, increasing storage areas. Um, there's a lot of opportunities there. And then Pacheco Pond is another um, possible bypass option. Right now the water goes into Novato Creek. There's a possibility that we could bypass some of those high flows out to Hamilton and take the pressure off Novato Creek. Um, once again, the technical memo on the website goes into this in much more detail, but I just wanted to give an idea of the kinds of things we're thinking about um, and see if there's interest uh, on the part of the community for looking into this in further detail. So public participation, I've already mentioned, is very important to us. Um, the watershed program will be presenting to some upcoming meetings of the Flood Control Zone 1 Advisory Board. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for July 30th. We have meetings also scheduled for September and December. And we will be going to, those are public meetings. Uh, we will be um, keeping them updated on the progress of this alternatives modeling through the summer and the various reports that are coming out. And then obviously the community meetings. This is our first one. We envision another one this fall to go over the um, alternatives assessment report and then another meeting in the spring to go over next steps. And this is my last slide. Um, for more information, you can contact me. I have my card out on the front table, lwilliams at marincounty.org. Um, our Novato Watershed Program webpage is where we put all of our program products. We have fact sheets on there. We have an online watershed tour. Um, all of our reports get posted there. Um, meeting notices get posted there. And if you've signed up and given us your email, I'll add you to our notification list. If you want to do that yourself, you can do that on the marinewatersheds.org website. Um, and then I'll just say again, we have those comment cards out there to give feedback today.